Hello everyone, Stefan here. Uh, with this video I'm going to go over the advanced Karo Khan continuing the series on the theory of the Karo Khan defense. And in the first video I went through the basics and the introduction of the opening, so if you are unfamiliar with the, with the theory of the Karo Khan and the variations which can occur, I would advise you to watch that video first. I will put the link in the description below. And today we are going to go very much in depth in the advanced variation only, so only focusing on, on e5 on move 3. Of course, after e4, black plays c6, the Karo Khan, d4, d5, and now white doesn't go for knight to c3 which is the main line of the Karo Khan, but he plays e5. And this is arguably the best way for white to fight uh, against the Karo Khan. And the, engine, uh, the engines would approve of this opening choice for white. And this is what gives white most, uh, most space, most peace activity, and the most chances actually if played perfectly. But it's a very double-edged opening and white has, a uh, white has a lot of activity, but black has a perfectly solid structure which isn't uh, easily attacked. So, from this position on, first I would like to go uh, over one sideline uh, in the variation, and that's c5. And after c5, uh, black is sacrificing a pawn virtually and allowing white to take. Of course, white should take. But uh, what black achieves with c5 is uh, cracking open white's pawn structure, weakening uh, e5 significantly. And of course, in many, many variations, the move f4 isn't a possibility. So this is now destroying white's idea of a strong center. And if you, if you remember, black actually, white actually wasted three tempi to play e4, d4, and then e5. So this move uh, takes away a tempo for white in exchange for a sacrificed pawn which can sometimes be regained afterwards but usually black just lets it go for activity uh, the main move here of course is knight to c6 and after knight to c6 bishop to b5 e6 bishop to e3 knight to e7, e7 and you can see that white doesn't have that much Black has uh, mo even more than enough for the pawn. Black extends great here. Uh, another uh, another move Black could try after d takes c5 is e6, solidifying his position immediately. And after bishop to e3, knight to h6, developing this way, preparing to uh, bring the knight to f5 and attack the bishop. So after c3, knight f5, the bishop would go to d4. So remember this as one sideline side after e5. Of course, in 99% of uh, the advanced Karo Khan games, you will see the main line with bishop to f5. But c5, c5. Uh, could be a great idea to surprise one of your opponents and if you study the line 10 or 15 moves in depth you will surely have a better position out of the opening but let's get back to the main move uh, bishop to f5 of course is best for for black what black is doing with this move uh, he's getting rid of his worst pro problem in the position and if you're familiar with the French defense or with the Slav positions, then you have surely had problems with your c8 bishop or with li light squared bishop. And with this move, uh, black isn't planning to do something active with the bishop. It's, he's rather preparing to get rid of the bishop or to resolve the problems uh, which arise if the bishop is locked on c8. So this is simply preparing to develop the bishop uh, before closing down his pawn structure with e6. And with this, black is creating a pawn triangle uh, in the center, same as in the Slav defense, and this is a very hard structure for white to crack. In exchange, uh, white has of course a strong pawn center, more space, he's controlling a lot of key squares, and uh, both sides have chances, but white has more space, more peace activity, and black is uh, much more solid, and his king is usually much safer in a lot of variations. Now, from this move on, this is where the position really branches out. The first three moves are what happens in 99% of the games. If it doesn't, then somebody made a mistake, probably. So the main uh, main move on move 4 for white is knight to f3. And this wasn't the most popular continuation until the 1990s when uh, Nigel Short popularized it in his own games. That's why it's called the short variation. Before this, the advanced variation used to be played in a much more aggressive way for white and white used to attack much sooner. But now this became uh, the most popular way to play and it's positional maneuvering. Uh, white is planning to castle king side to develop all of his pieces and have a slight advantage in the center. So the game would continue with e6, of course, solidifying his pawn structure, closing down the pawn triangle, bishop to e2, preparing to castle uh, kingside, not going for any attack yet, knight to d7 by black, and here on, on move 5, black doesn't have to play knight to d7, this is just the most, most active move, because black usually strives to attack the center with c5, break up white's pawn structure, and this doesn't close down, down the, the bishop. Of course, another possibility after bishop to e2 is to play c5 immediately, which might be more aggressive than... Uh, 
the knight to d7 and after bishop to e3 c takes d4 knight takes d4 knight takes c7 now of course uh, since the knight is attacking the bishop you don't move the bishop where you defend it with knight to e7 this is the best possibility and as we said you if you're a black you actually want to get rid of this bishop because it's staring at nothing for most of the game and allowing uh, white to take would be favorable for black if knight f5 knight f5 uh, knight f5 black would have a solid position so here white usually continues with knight to d2 knight b to c6 and now this position is uh, actually okay for for black white has a slight opening edge but it's it's great for black. So after bishop to e2, you don't have to play knight to c7, you can play c5. Another possibility is knight to e7, immediately protecting the bishop on f5, but this is the least favorable for black because you are undefending the c5 square, you are blocking your bishop, but it's also playable. All three moves are playable. So this is the position. Castle c5, if black takes, of course, you, you are temporarily sacrificing a pawn, but white usually plays c4 in this position. And here what you have to remember is that you never take the d-pawn, you never play c takes d. This is too weakening for black because you are allowing uh, white to strike at your central structure. You, e you either play knight b to c6, solidifying, or you take d takes c4. And after bishop takes c4, the great thing for black is that white uh, is never threatening to play d5, which would uh, improve his position. So you are great here. If he takes... If he takes at some point and, and c5, you are you are okay. But after knight b to c6, you would actually like uh, like white to take on c5 because you would have a lot of activity for the pawn. Another possibility, of course, after uh, knight b to c6 is that white will play d takes c5, and now you just play d4. And you have an advanced pawn, c5 is inevitably falling, it's not easy to defend with b5, so this is, uh, this is another possibility you have to remember. So after bishop to e2, in the short variation, black chooses either knight to d7, c5 or knight to e7. As I said, knight to d7 is the most popular way to, for black to fight for an advantage and to equalize, and white will castle, knight to e7, knight b to d2, h6, and from this position on, Black usually has three plans. Uh, one of them is to put the queen on c7, castle queen side, and attack the king side. Another one is to simply play h6, solidify uh, your position but by retreating the bishop to h7 and playing knight to h5, attacking d4. And the third possibility is the most active one, which after white plays knight to b3, is that black strikes with g5. So the move h6 is either preparing to hide the bishop on h7 or to strike uh, on the king side with g5. And this is the most active way for for black to play against the short variation. This is what you have to remember if you want to fight for an advantage with black. And uh, the game will usually continue with knight to e1, queen to c7, and knight to d3, defending the e5 pawn. And what black is threatening in a lot of uh, advanced positions, especially in the in the short variation, is after c5 to weaken the defense of the e pawn. And this is the common theme in the opening. If uh, black wants, he can even uh, uh, even develop the bishop to g7 and strike at this diagonal and any f4 is too weakening especially after g5 so you are aiming to disrupt the defense of e5 and it could even be done by f6 and dislodging the pawn this way so once black achieves c5 and disrupts the defense of e5 black is pretty much winning in the position and white has to prevent that and now those are the middle game uh, middle game ideas for black so if you want to study the opening, I would advise you to look at games of Nigel Short, of course, and his opponents. He played this against Kasparov as well. Uh, and, of course, David Navarra, who is the most famous Karokan player uh, today. He's a Czech super grandmaster over 2700. You can check out his game against Kasparov in the Sing Singfield Rapid and Blitz uh, from last year. And he has, I think he has over 50 games in the Karokan, so he would be the one to study. But basically what you have to remember in the, in the main line uh, after bishop to e2 that you aim to develop your knights, you don't mind exchanging this bishop and you will either give it away by uh, retaking with the knight on f5 or you will hide it on h7 with h6 and then play knight to f5 and you are basically aiming to, to play c5, take here, place the knight on c6 and weaken e5. So when black uh, starts his middle game plans, it's usually about this pawn and he will have a lot of pieces attacking this pawn. So this is the short variation of the advanced Karokan. After bishop to f5, uh, the second most common move, which used to be play, uh, played before the 90s, one of the main uh, exponents of this idea was Alexei, Alexei Shirov, and you should definitely check out his games. He was one of the most aggressive players with white against the Karokan. Uh, the move is knight to c3, and this is the so-called Van der Veel attack. 
in the advanced Karokan. And what this does is uh, white is preparing uh, a king side attack on black and he's planning to do it swiftly and not give black too much time. Usually this position is, ends up in black sacrificing a pawn for the initiative on the queen side and in the center and it's favorable for both sides. Actually both sides stand the chance. I would say that black is slightly better for despite being a pawn down but anyway. In this position, black of course plays uh, e6. You don't know what, what white is going to play. The Vanderville attack is g4, which is the most common idea, but white could still play knight to f3 and go for the short variation. So now uh, g4, this is the Vanderville attack, dislodging the bishop. You have to play bishop to g6, uh, knight g to e2, and this is now preparing to play knight to f4, attacking the bishop. So now c5, and black has to seek counterplay. You are uh, relinquishing your bishop if white wants to take it. You are also accepting the fact that you are going to lose your h pawn. You will see that in a few moves. And you have to seek counterplay in the center and on the queen side. And the best way is to disrupt uh, white's central control, which he fought for at the start of the game by wasting three moves with e4, d4, e5. So now white continues with h4, trying to trap the bishop. In this position, you play h5, h6 is too slow. And this is basically sacrificing a pawn because now after knight to f4, you should never allow uh, your bishop to be taken. If you allow white to take on g6 and you take with the f pawn, your position is busted and your king is so unsafe that you aren't going to survive 10 more moves. So you play bishop to h7 and you give away your h5 pawn, which is okay. Knight, f knight h5 and you play c takes d4, striking in the center. And you can see that despite after uh, knight to b5, uh, knight to c6, knight takes d4, despite black being a pawn down, Black has a lot of initiative in the center and on the queen side. The knight is pretty much misplaced on h5. Uh, the e5 pawn is weak. The diagonals to white's king are weak as well. And there are a lot of key squares that black could exploit in this position. The knight is actually misplaced as well. So black has a lot of initiative for the pawn. And I'm not going to go into too much... Uh, uh, detail on this line I'm not going to go further this is pretty much where the theory uh, branches out and there is there are several possibilities for both colors on each move from here on and if you are interested in an, an, in an aggressive way to fight the Karo Khan uh, with white pieces this is the position you should be studying and if you are black you shouldn't be afraid of this you have a lot of chances just don't be afraid to sacrifice your pawn and seek counter counterplay in the center instead Okay, so so after uh, bishop to f5, the Nigel short variation with knight to f3 and the Vanderville attack with knight to c3 are the most common lines. I'm going to go over a, a few sidelines which are very popular and very good for, for white as well. Uh, one great way for for white to fight in the advanced Karokan is to play h4. This is the Tal variation of the advanced Karokan. And with this move, white is immediately, of course, threatening to trap the bishop if black plays a nothing move like e6. Then g4, bishop to g6, h5 traps the bishop. So black has to react. The only move in this position for black is h5 not allowing g4 and now white strikes uh, on the queen side as well with c4 and this is a very active way to play for white and you're actually expanding on both both sides of the board but your pawns aren't over advanced your your pawns are pretty safe in this position uh, from here on of course black should never never take on, on c4 you play e6 solidifying knight to c3 knight to e7 knight g to e2 knight d7 these are just the most common moves but you can see that white is uh, grabbing a lot of space in some positions he might prepare f3 g4 uh, getting rid of black's bishop and pushing it further back and one main idea as well is to play queen to b3 and after black plays queen to b6 uh, allowing him to exchange the queens by playing c4 this is for, for forcing a trade and what's worse for black it's weakening the bishop on f8 and in the tal variation of the advanced karokan this is the most problematic piece for for black because if uh, white closes down the position with c4 the bishop will have to uh, develop most probably to h6 to exchange itself but there are ways for white to prevent that with f4 so if f4 f4 g3 then the bishop is uh, dead for the rest of the game this is what you have to i would advise you if uh, white plays h4 on move 4 start thinking about your dark squared bishop and how to how to exchange it off because you will have a lot of problems with the bishop so this is the Tal variation. Another great way for white to play against the advanced Karo Khan is to play knight to e2 on move 4. This is the Bronstein uh, variation named after David Bronstein, the Russian uh, super grandmaster. And this position is uh, also very attacking, even though the move might seem passive. The, the idea is that after e6, and by the way, if you're black, you pretty much have to play e6 on move 4. You have to uh, 
uh, start developing. The idea is that after e6, white immediately plays knight to g4, challenging the bishop, and after knight, uh, bishop to g6, h4, uh, once again striking on the on the king side, and after h5, bishop to e2, c5, uh, black six, six counterplay. Uh, this is a position in which black is once again offering a sacrifice of a pawn, but here white should never take it, even though the, the h5 pawn is attacked three times, white pretty much wasted tempi uh, to get to this position because he can't take the pawn, and if he doesn't take the pawn he will stand okay, so uh, the, the position is normal, black has space on the queen side and uh, white has space on the king side, and white will usually castle short, black will usually castle long in this position actually, and let me just show you why can't the pawn be taken. Uh, if bishop takes h5, then bishop takes h5, knight takes h5, c takes d4. You can see that the, the d-pawn can't be taken because the knight is loose, of course. And now bishop to g5, you don't play f6, that's a too, too much of a weakening move. You play queen to b6. And now, now you can see that a lot of stuff in white's position is dropping. b2 is loose. Uh, d4 is loose, the knight is loose, and after knight to d2, knight to d7, there's no way for, for white to defend his position, and black is actually winning both strategically and uh, materially, because a lot of stuff will be dropping. So these are four good moves for white. Uh, firstly, the short variation, the most uh, posi positional and solid way for white to fight the, the Karo Khan in the advanced variation. Knight to c3, the aggressive way to, to play, h4, uh, the Tal variation, the most aggressive variation, and the Bronstein variation with knight to e2. This is, I would say, the worst uh, the worst of all four common variations against the advanced Karokan. Uh, I, I'm going to show you two more sidelines, which aren't that uh, common. Uh, first one is what I see often in Blitz games and even 2000 rated players and above play this move. And this move was actually uh, mentioned by Nimzovic. It's in the first uh, book in his, uh, the first game in his book My System, where he says that after bishop to d3, bishop takes, queen takes, and d6, black is much better and strategically winning already. And that's partly true. Of course, black isn't winning, black is just equalized on move 3, which is very uncommon. So. You managed uh, to get rid of your worst piece, solidify your position, and the only tempo up white has is a queen, which is misplaced on d3. So, bishop to d3 should never really be played by white, and despite that, people play it often. And I will, uh, I have seen black actually retreat the bishop in, in some positions, so... If white plays bishop to d3, take the bishop, and then play e6 after queen takes, and if you are white, never play bishop to d3. Uh, a good move for white to play as a sideline is to play c4 on move 4, and this might be actually a surprise to black, and this is a great way uh, to fight the Karo Khan. After e6, knight to c3, you only develop your knight after you have moved your c-pawn forward, and after knight e7, queen b3, queen b6, you can see that, that the position is solid for white, and here you play c5, you initiate the trade of queens, and after queen b3, a b3, you can see what I was talking about once again in this variation as well, black has uh, a horrible bishop on f Eight, he will have to develop it either to g7 or to h6 on this diagonal. And what's even worse, white is preparing sort of a minority attack with uh, b4, b5, and weakening up, weakening and opening up black's pawn structure uh, on the queen side. And this means that the c6 pawn is forever going to be weak. And I would say this position is very favorable for white, despite the, engi the engines think this is equal and that black is completely equal. But I think, practically speaking, black has a lot of stuff to think about. So, if you are looking a for a surprise weapon against the Karo Khan and you play the advanced variation, I would advise c4 on move 4. This is a very aggressive line that no not many people know in the Karo Khan. Okay, uh, this is it. I'm not going to go into too much more detail. Just remember that bishop to f5 is the main move. Uh, a sideline for black would be c5, the Botovnik Karl's defense. And after bishop to f5, uh, white has uh, four or five good options. Knight to f3, the short variation, the positional approach. Knight to c3, the Van der Wiel attack, the most aggressive way to play. h4, the Tal variation, double-edged, where uh, white advances a lot of his pawns. Uh, Bronstein variation, uh, a good way for, for white to play, but I think this is the worst of all five, five variations for white. I think uh, black has a lot more chances to equalize here. And c4. Uh, c4 is, I think, one of the best ways because, because not many players will black, uh, with black will know how to react to this variation and what to do with their bishop. 
Ok everybody, uh, I hope you liked this video on the advanced Karokan. Once again, if you don't know the basic theory of the opening, I would advise you to check out uh, the video I made on the introduction to the Karokan. I will put the link in the description below. And thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for more theoretical videos and more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.